Hey guys, I'm John with Hops and Brews, and today we're going to be checking out what is the best regularly imported non-alcoholic beer. I don't even know what any of these taste like. So, like I said, we're going to be trying to figure out what is the best regularly imported non-alcoholic beer. Now, when I mean imported, I mean EU, UK, something over the pond, not uh, from Canada or South America or, or something like that. Um, so, we're going to be trying to figure those out. And what are the regularly imported ones that we can usually get? These are what I found to be pretty regularly available from bottle shops to your local grocery store. And we're gonna do this just like we did with the domestic non-alcoholic beers. We're going to try to match them and then rank them best to worst. Let's go ahead and get to it. So we have St. Pauli's Girl non-alcoholic imported from Germany. Klaus Haller original imported from Germany. We have Bitburger Premium Pills Non-Alcoholic imported from Germany. We also have Buckler Non-Alcoholic imported from Holland. We have Imported Caliber from the Brewers of Guinness imported from the UK. We also have Weinhestefaner Premium Bavericum, probably butchered that. And last we have Eindbecker Non-Alcoholic Pills imported from Germany. All right, close my eyes. I have no idea what's, how far, what's going on. Okay. And just to be even more fair. Oh. There we go. I have no clue. And just in case you still doubt me? Close my eyes. As you can see, they all basically look very similar in color. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, give it a whirl. Uh, I'm gonna go with this one. It's got a aroma to it, but not super like funky but there's a funk to it it like sniffing it somehow hurts my sinuses it kind of has a sour note at the beginning and then skunky dirty feet this is hard because I don't really like I had all of these but like two weeks ago so I don't really quite remember you know I'm, I'm just gonna go with what is this the uh bit the burger just for now we're gonna call that that one weird tanginess in the back this one smells different this one kind of kind of smells more like a, a lager skunky lager definitely more metallic tasting ooh because of that I'm gonna go ahead and put this um Einbecker for now Mm, nothing really there. Tart, tartness. I'm gonna go with the um, beer, or the Heineken, whatever Guinness. Sorry, Guinness wannabe. What is this one? This has got a bit of a skunk, a little bit of a skunk. That's got a decent malt flavor though to it. That one's not bad. I mean, like, what I mean, not bad. I mean, not bad within the first three I tried. Not bad. That actually kind of, um, yeah, that that. That tastes like a, a light beer. You know, I'm gonna go with, um, ooh, there's a sweet maltiness. I'm gonna go with, um, it might be the St. Pauli girl, but I'm gonna go with the Weinhestefana or whatever. Ooh, that's sweet too. That's gonna be a tough one. This one and this one taste very similar. Hair maltier. This has got a, a, a little sour note at the beginning. I'm gonna go with the um, Buckler. See, this is different because, you know, you kind of know domestics here, but... So when I was doing the domestic one, you'd think, okay, I'm going to match all those flavors. But... Mm, dry, with the tartness at the back end. Not much flavor, not much body. 
I'm gonna go ahead with the Clouster, which would then theoretically mean this is the St. Pauli girl. Oh god, that smells. <laughs> How to describe that aroma? It smells like a... You, I, I know people say skunk beer, but this smells like a skunk. Not skunk beer, but like, uh, like feet and skunk. What's a, oh, wow, that's actually not a horrible taste. Very sweet. All right, we'll just go with the St. Pauli girl. Um, hmm. You know, because I'm gonna go ahead and probably keep those two. Well, I had this one like a couple days ago and I remember it tasting pretty decent. And I remember it wasn't toward the end that I was like, okay, I'm kind of getting tired of this beer. And you would think the world's oldest still in production brewery right now would know how to make a good non-alcoholic beer. Well, just make anything taste good. And honestly, their Hefeweizen is amazing. A lot of their beers are amazing. Uh, where the St. Pauli girl, I'm gonna go with the skunkiness because the green lighter bottle, um, it's got a sweet flavor to it. And I kind of almost remember St. Pauli girls having that, not the non-alcoholic, but just the regular one. It just kind of smells familiar, like bad. So it's the rest of these. This tinny one, I still get a tin flavor. That's very plain right there, whatever that is. Tart. Are there any like, um, hints? See, these four in the center, all kind of taste. Oh, that's got a tart note to it. A real tart note to it. Okay, I think I've locked all my flavors in. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try it one more time and then rank them. Hate the aroma. Back end is, is pretty darn good. Nice, sweet. Um, this one, again, actually I, I isn't too bad. That one started to grow on me. Which is weird, is, is that's got a, as these warmed up, this started off being bland and now starting to become sweet. Same with this one. But this one still kind of has a um, sour note to it. Not super sour. This tastes like nothing. Sour, very sour, it's gotten more sour. This one started to get bitter actually, which is very weird. And that one still tastes like a metal can. Might be a giveaway, don't know. I do know these come in bottles, but I got the can. So this one's gonna come in at number seven. Um, so that's seven, six, probably five, four, three. Ugh, the aroma, but the back is so good. Two, and, uh, and number one. Klaus Haller. I'm hoping that's what it is. Okay, let's see what we got. Worst, I said is Breitberger. Breitberger. <laughs> that goes there. That is the worst one. So that goes. Okay, and then we got six is Vine Hassafon right here, number six. So at least that's in order, which I gave a number five, whatever was there, which is Eisen, this one, Eisenbecker. And then number four, I said, was Becker, Be Buckler. So I got that one right. Cool. Number three, third best. St. Paul, I got that one right too. St. Pauli girl. St. Paul girl, Pauli girl. Yep, St. Pauli girl. Uh, we're gonna go number two. Caliber, Caliber. I didn't get that one right, but there we go. And number one, then, Klauhalster. 
so whoops uh, so this goes this is right but it's a number three so there I got I got three of these actually pretty accurate it's cool um, and it's actually surprising because I, I thought I I had this the other day I, I liked it like I said though uh, the Saint Polly girl there is a skunky aroma but if you get past that it actually has got a really nice sweetness to it um, but I think it is coming pretty high in calories oh but my god that aroma and caliber huh that's pretty good but this Klaus holds there I actually like I have their dry hop one as well and I hear they uh, make a holiday one too that actually isn't bad I'm digging it actually this this oh okay it's almost 100 calories 96 calories well that, that won't explain a lot but this is the rankings for the most common imported non-alcoholic beers well that I could find at least see you guys later Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. Remember, hit like and subscribe. Follow me on all my social media. Some links will be at the very bottom of the description. Uh, is there a imported beer that you regularly see or can easily find that I might have forgotten? What is your favorite imported over the pond non-alcoholic beer? Let me know in the comments below. See you guys later.